I've got an unexpected repair to do. I'll just do a live stream, I'll just do some heat shrinking, and this thing made a funny noise. I think we need to have a look at it and see what's going on. It's been working beautifully for me since I got it for years. Let's have a look at it and see if it's still doing it. Yeah, mm, sounds like a van motor problem. Let's open this thing up. What screws we got? Looks like four screws potentially each side. I don't have a little electric screwdriver somewhere. Which we should like, have it on the bench so I can use it. That's far easier. This is what the inside is like, you've never seen one. This looks kind of like that inside. Not much to them. Bit of controller on the front for the actual interface. Control board. Blower motor. Sucks air in, blows it out there. So it sounds like this has gone. This is all intact. The hose hasn't come off. It hasn't split. I'm going to have to pull this out, I think, and pull it apart. I'm guessing the actual impeller has detached from the motor itself. Hopefully it's not broken. So I'm just feeling this tube here. I actually feel there's something in here. I think there might be a spring or something in there to help stop it collapsing. That's a common technique of stopping pipes collapsing to put a spring inside it because it's flexible and you can't actually compress it too easily. How does that plug in? Does that plug in somewhere? So I can unplug this, cut that cable tie. There we go, there's the bundle for the motor. At some point this is going to unplug. There we go, it's really tight. That's good, it's nice and tight. So that's the motor assembly. Cut this cable tie here as well. Anyway, so I hope I can pull this tube off. Yep, yep, and sure enough there's a spring. So let's try and get this motor off this mounting without destroying the mounting. Let's poke it through with something. Something not too sharp. Um, something not too sharp, let's see. Mm, my width. It looks like clips together. These little clips around the outside. It looks like two halves come apart. That's already undone almost. So is that one? That one? That one? That's easy. Okay. Housing. Impeller. Oh, it's cracked. So it's making a horrible noise because it's wobbling. So it's interesting why it's got this aluminium plate on one side. I suppose it's for ease of manufacture. So we've got a probably polycarbonate. Might even be polystyrene actually. So obviously you have heat stakes thing at the top, like little posts, and I put the Aim over the top and then they heat stake them, just squash them flat with the heater, which then traps the aluminium on. It's a cheap way of manufacturing it, it's quite clever. Instead of having all these little fingers which have to go inside, um, or having two pieces of plastic which are stuck together. Actually, hmm, it's not bad, but it's cracked, so that's going to be problematic, especially as it's pressed onto a motor shaft. I can get right to the shaft actually, that's good. Excellent, that's sliding off. Right, it's just kind of trying to get this impeller off. I've got my 3D printer fired up now, so hopefully uh, we can print nicely with that. Someone on Thingiverse had designed a new impeller for this, so that was nice of them. Well done. I've forgotten the name now. I might chuck a link in down below or something in the video. Just trying to get this impeller off. Seems I keep running out of screwdriver sizes. A bit more. So when things are injection molded, they are. Um, injected into the mould, right? That's what's called injection moulding. So what happens is you get plastic which is molten, gets pushed into a mould through what's called a gate. And what I'm actually looking at here, I can, I can actually see where they are now. So we've got these flow marks here, like this. There's one there, and there's another one there, it's like a triangle. Like, so there's one there, one there, one there, it's like a Y I suppose. And those are flow fronts where the molten plastic are flying through the mould and the two flow fronts come together. Right, so there's a flow front coming this way, and there's one going that way, and they better they meet up, you get this little witness mark, just there, and just there, and just there. Kind of barely see them. But what I can see, see this little bit just there, and that bit there, and that bit there. See those are exactly in between those two marks, right, each one. Those are the gates because there's no real dags there, these are flush, so there's a hot runner system gates and there's three of them like that. Now usually what 
the weaknesses is the flow mark away from the gate. So usually running away from the gate like that, for example, or that way, those would be where they get weak. But it's actually cracked right across here, which is kind of from this gate, kind of, in that direction and this direction, to a point. But when it gets to here, it changes. It should really be a weakness line, you know, a weak point going that way. And it kind of is. You do have a line there. So it's interesting it's not really fractured across the point I'd expect it to. I mean, this end may be. I mean, that will be a weak point going that direction away from that gate towards the outside. So that line there is kind of on a weak point. So it's interesting why it's coming right across like that, though. It's not what I would have expected to happen. I would have expected to go like a chunk and like a triangle chunk out of it. But, uh, you know, you see that witness mark like there. Maybe you can just see it. It would have gone that way. That's what I would have expected. Because those are weak spots in the mould as well. Someone had made one of these things on Thingiverse, so I am currently 3D printing it. Hopefully it comes out. We shall see. Right, so let's clean this up a bit, got the daggy bits off it and taken a little round off the outside and that sort of stuff. It's not perfect, but it may not work anyway. So let's see if it actually goes onto the motor or not. Because I have over extrusion, I know I've got that problem. I haven't got my print settings quite right yet for that particular roll of Petri. Um, it will be oversized, which means the hole is likely to be too small. So the shaft diameter on this, that's definitely zeroed. Let's do it there. 2.97, so it's kind of th three, kind of three more shaft really, isn't it? And this hole, which is not pretty. 2.5. Yeah. The other end, 2.6, yeah, so it's slightly undersized on the hole there. Need to tweak that a little bit. Let's round a 3mm bit through that hole there, just by hand. That should now fit on the shaft. And if it's too loose, I'll put a bit of glue on or something on it to hold it. But it's actually feeling alright. I'm going to push it on. That's actually good. So this has got this aluminum frame in here in order to create a pressure vessel, I suppose. And that's what the other side looks like. So I have to make sure I have this pushed down far enough to actually work. Because it sucks everything through the centre. So it's obviously running that direction, right, to blow it outwards. So it's creating a vacuum in there and just placing it towards the outside. Which doesn't give a lot of gap, actually, for that air to actually get out through that little seam around there. It's got to go through that out bit and through that tube there. I would have thought really it would be more beneficial to have this out a bit here, smaller. And it gives it more space for the air to get out. Alright, so I've got that off there. Now I've got to try and glue this thing back on to the new one in the middle, exactly. If it's off to one side it's going to wobble like anything. So I put super glue on here. Let's try and get this thing in the middle. I don't have much time now. Is that it? No. Got there. I'm looking at the distance from the uh, end of the flight to the edge of the disc. They actually look pretty even. Let's leave it like that for a while. Let that set up. And hopefully I can put some more glue on it and get it nice and strong. I doubt it. I might have to sit here for a while just holding it. Just like that. I'll come back in half an hour. Alright, so I've glued the little aluminium disc onto the other one. I'm currently 3D printing another version. I wasn't really happy with this design too much. I didn't like the fact of gluing that disc on because aluminium doesn't necessarily glue too well. So we'll see how that goes. If it lasts or not, I don't know. But I'm currently 3D printing another version, which is basically a slightly shortened version of the impeller, but mirrored. So I've got two pieces which are mirrored, which means they should be identical. And what I'll be able to do is glue those together instead and have one piece which is completely plastic and perfectly matched. That's the plan anyway. What I need to do now 
is reassemble this and see if it's actually going to work for more than 30 seconds. Because <laughs> this is the one with the aluminium disc glued onto it. So it's got this little spring in here, which is, as I could say, I could feel inside the pipe. And that slips over this. There we go. So that sits like that. And that slips down the tube. But again, that's just to stop it from collapsing. So what's for? I'm not going to mount it. I'm just going to plug it in. Right, because all you want to see is this is going to last more than 10 seconds. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Power on. Well, it's blowing. It's hot air coming out. And it's actually surprisingly quiet. Maximum speed. It smells like glue in here for some reason. It's, bl it's blowing the glue fumes out from the fan. Hmm, <laughs> sorry, that's the tape. Mm. Well, that's working. I'm actually surprised. Well, it is actually blowing, so. How long is that going to last? Who knows? I'll show you next, in the next clip, the 3D printed part which is mirrored. Once that's finished printing, I shall make one and prepare it. And I'll show you that next before we finish off. So I mean, this is what's left of the impeller, the bit that actually broke. But I think the one I've just printed isn't actually quite as good. I think the airflow is slightly less because the, the curves in it were less. This is sort of straight. I don't know if you can see it or not, but well enough maybe. But comes out sort of fairly straight and then curves and then straight up a little bit more so it's straighter there so much straight there and it's the main curve is here whereas the one on the 3d printed version is just a constant curve you kind of see it sort of straight and straight then curve and then straight again all right but the 3d printed version is just a curve and it doesn't actually seem to have quite the same curvature to it i don't know which one's better does it really matter maybe maybe it matters i don't know Realistically, as long as this thing gets hot, it melts solder, it's fine. Right, so we've got the first print there, which I've already done. The second print, which is the top side, which is replacing that aluminium frame. 3D printers, great invention. Really good if you need to make repair parts. This is basically what I use my 3D printer for, is making replacement parts. So here's the parts. What I actually did is I reduced the height and then mirrored it, flipped it over and made a bigger hole on this side for the air inlet. At least I did the second time around. <laughs> and the idea is that when you face these together, because it's mirrored, it should be a perfect match. All those fins should line up together. So being plastic, it will glue much better together as well once you get the alignment right. Okay, get it aligned perfectly and then glue it and it'll be all those fan bodies with those little fins in there will line up together perfectly and it'll be glued much better than trying to stick a bit of aluminium onto a piece of pre printing and I trust that a lot more. What I'm going to do is I will glue this together and I will put that ready. Now what you may notice is that in the background I've put this back together again, I've reassembled it. I have tested it as you saw, it worked fine. I don't know how long it's going to work fine for that may be something which needs sorting out. I mean, it may fall off next week. It may fall off this afternoon. Don't know. Could be six months, another year. May never fail again. Who knows? So I'm going to glue these together, get this ready, and I'm going to leave this inside the casing somewhere. Right, I'll just tuck it in. So if it does fail, I've got a replacement straight away right there. I don't have to go searching for it. It's inside the box. I've also ordered a brand new unit. Whether it's an original, I don't know, but it looks the same. It could be an original. It wasn't cheap. I've ordered a new, complete blower unit. So if this were to fail and I couldn't fix it or doing this and this didn't last very long either or something like that, I used to got a brand new one to put in here and that's that dealt with again. I like to have spares. This gets me out of trouble for the time being. I mean, the one I've already done has worked. This one here will probably work fine too. So don't forget to check out the other videos down below, down there. There's a subscribe link over there. 
over there is a Patreon support link if you want to help support the channel and help me to buy things such as Blah Fan Motors for my hot air station.